but I want the suit. Okay, so listen, but no, this is what I just did. I real life did this. I um I just filed suit against um the last the last um I just filed suit against the last remember I had that one thing on my Equifax and my experiment report that I needed to get off. So I, I just filed suit on that. And so um I'm working on that right now because I'm trying to do something. Because that's I literally have one negative item on two reports. So I don't my one report I got it all the way clean. Um my mortgage is finally reporting on all my reports and they took a little dip because of the mortgage. But in about two or three months they'll level back off. Um but it is on there now. And so Oh, I don't know why. I don't know what happened. You have to ask somebody in their family. Lady T, if you if you're a big fan of me, you do not you you must be new here. There's no I don't have any fans. The my fans are the, are the haters. Those are my fans. If you're here, you're family. You're a simple. You're family. We don't do fans over here. We do no fans. We don't have fans. So, so Rome, I don't know. You have to ask somebody that knows or somebody that's close. I don't. I have no clue. I, I do. I have no. No, I don't know nothing about what happened to that young man. Okay, I don't know nothing. This you went in the wrong spot. All right, so by me having them, so okay, so by me having them two things, and they just really playing with me and playing in my face, I went ahead and filed suit against Equifax and Experian. And so I'm waiting for um, the judge to rule in my former pauper's motion. And once he do that, I'm going to serve them. Have them serve. I might show you that process because it's not really hard. Um, and it's not too expensive either. It might be like $100 $200. You have them served. And once you have them served, they get notice that a lawsuit has been filed against them. And so if they, so this is like a wake up call. Like, like if you get to the point, and keep in mind, now um, I have been disputing since December, all right? So that's the December, January, February, March, April, May, June, July. August and September. That's 10 disputes I put in. What? No, it's nine. I disputed the, I disputed, okay, this is not my account. I disputed that it was incorrect date. I disputed it was incorrect amount. I disputed it was incorrect address. I disputed there was incorrect spelling my name. I disputed there was, um, um, the payment didn't line up with this one. I disputed that, uh, it was an incorrect their address. I disputed that um, the date of opening was incorrect, invalidated. I just I disputed a lot of things, and either they did fix it or they just continually verified it. All right, so generally, I you know you this could, this process could go um on for a long time, and I was just sick of it. And it's something I'm trying to do that um I need to get this situation finally mitigated. So right now I'm at like a, I'm at a level that I was able to get something, but I really want to do something else. And so um, I'm not really going to speak on what it is because of I just don't want to. But I'll just show it when it happened. But so what I want to do, so what I did was um, I filed a law suit against them for against um, violations for the Fair Credit Reporting Act um, saying that they're incorrectly reporting stuff. I also, this was the lucky part, I also got a letter. See, this is kind of like what happened. Um, sort of, kind of. It was like they kept validating, but they sent me a letter saying, look, we understand the company that I'm dealing with, the, the, the original creditor is saying that, okay, we understand. If you care on the credit, let me speak to Manor. Exactly. Let me just speak to the judge. <laughs> the letter they sent me was basically saying, okay, we understand this wasn't right here and this wasn't right there and this wasn't right there, but we fixed everything. No, sister. The Federal Credit Report they don't say that. The Federal Credit Report is supposed to be 100% accurate at all given times. So what I'm trying to go in on is like, you weren't supposed to fix it, you were supposed to remove it. And so that's what I'm trying to, that's what I'm suing for because the credit bureaus didn't remove it, even though I'm having proof that the original creditor who's reporting is saying, okay, we didn't, we wasn't reporting this correctly. So that's for months you wasn't reporting this correctly. So the rate on my mortgage and all kind of stuff like that, I'm going to sue you for damages for all that. So what I'm praying will happen, I think it'll happen for Equifax because Equifax don't like to go to court. Um, Experian know them hoes to be hoes. Equifax did that, was, did that breach and all that stuff like that. So they'll, 
they'll they'll they just don't want all that litigation right now. But Miss Motherfucking um but Miss Motherfucking uh experience she'll go toe to toe with you. I have went to toe to toe with her before. I have won, but it wasn't no easy fight. She'll go toe to toe when she thinks she right, girl. And I think that's where she thinks she at right now. So um I don't know. So if I'm I'm hoping and praying that um once they serve, they'll be like, okay, shake it. I don't even fuss with you. Go ahead and then just remove it and I'll dismiss the lawsuit. But if they don't, then we just gonna we gonna strap up. You heard me? That's what it is. Okay. <laughs> so with that being said, um, yes, I do my own lawsuits. I file in pro se, which is being on self. But I have to um but I I I'm, I, I, I got a paralegal thing in school. Can I do a lawsuit for you? Nope. That is a very much so against the law. Not only would I go to jail because it's a person an attorney, a, a representative of a court, all kinds of stuff like that, it's a big thing. I cannot go to jail. I cannot prepare a lawsuit for you. The only person that can prepare a lawsuit for you is a lawyer or a paralegal under the, the direction of an attorney. That's the only... That's the only thing. What do you think of Credit Karma? It's bullshit. I mean, it tells you what your account is, but the score is a vanity score that nobody uses. No lender uses. So Credit Karma is just bullshit. Um, the best one I, I suggest, uh, Experian. Check and see if you part of the Experian. Let me see. This is how I check my credit reports and get an accurate view of each. Um, Experian, I pay for the monitor. It's like twenty dollars a month. Um, I think it is special like fourteen. Is that Shekinah, kind of any? Um. So I pay for Experian because it will give me a monthly update of all three years and the credit score on each. Do the score track and see what the score is going up and down and all that stuff like that. Um, and so that's worth paying for. Um. But it also, because you purchase through Experian, you get your Experian report monitored every day. So they just your Experian report every single day, whatever it is. Um, I use Wallet Hub for TransUnion because it gives you a report every day. Um, there is no free service. So, I, you know, I, you get a, you get one, they put it every day. It doesn't impact your credit score. Um, I think credit card is like every week or something like that. I use Wallet Hub for that. I don't pay attention to the Wallet Hub score because that's, of course, the Vantage score. But the experience score is the, your actual FICO score. Um, and then I use, my FICO is expensive as fuck. Credit-wise through Capital One, I don't have Capital One, so I don't, I don't. I don't. And for my experience with the, cause so, okay, so my scores are coming from experience. TransUnion, my report is coming from Wallet Hub. My, um, my uh, Equifax report is coming from Equifax um, because I was part of the data breach. And once you was part of the data breach, they allow you like free meta credit monitor for like two years. But watch this. I'm going to tell you all something else. Because of Corona, you could go to annualcreditreport.com every seven days and get a free copy of all three of your reports. It does not include a score, but your score is contingent upon what's on your report. So if you look at your score and you don't like your score, then you would have to go look at your reports to see what's causing your score to be your score anyway. So you can go to annual credit report. Do you like your reports? Yes. Yes. I lock them when I know I'm... Yeah. I lock them because I, it, it helped me not to apply for credit too. That is locking, locking them is more for me than them because... I don't, I don't have to go through the process of having to unlock it, so I'm not going to apply for nothing. And you want to keep your inquiries as much low as possible. So I do like my credit reports so that I don't apply for shit. It's like, okay, I, oh, bitch, I got a seven-something. Let me take this whole for a spin. Let me go apply for everything so I can just tank the score. No. It's something else I'm trying to do. It's something that I have another goal that I'm working on. And so with uh, finances and goal, I, I mean, the, the house is a goal, but the next goal is I do want to get out of the lease. And um, there are ways I can get out of the lease, but I definitely want to get a better term on financing than I actually had previously. Um, at a better interest rate, uh, I could get more call, better interest rate for a lesser down, lesser payment, lesser down payment, everything like that, um, once I'm at a certain area. And so this is what my next goal is, because the lease on the car that I have is not beneficial to me because I drive so much. I drive too much. And so, um, yeah, I want to pay something off, but I know it will affect my credit negatively. What is it? Tasty and don't just say something like you have to know what it is. 
what are you trying to pay off? And explain to me why you think it will affect your credit negatively. Credit is not everything just cookie cutter uniform. Understand that. Everybody's credit. I've seen identical twins, they're identical stuff, and have two different credit scores. I have literally seen this in my own eyes. I like how experience you can't. I like how on experience you can boost your score. You can't, well, um, there is something. There, so when we start the credit stuff, we, which I'm looking at in November um, right now, is um, I'll give y'all the, some resources too because you can do that with Experian, but you can also do that with TransUnion Equifax in a sense. Say, for instance, you are paying rent, you can use rent reporters to report your rent, but there are also services that report other utility payments and stuff like that because that's what Experian is. Experian boosts, you link your bank account, they see your other bills that you've been paying, your utility bills, your cell phone bills, and stuff like that, and they use that to generate payment activity um, to verify payment and receipts and report it on their Experian reports. That's all the boost is. It's just your stuff. It's not like they're giving you something for free it's just the stuff that is traditionally not reported a credit care credit account um and what status is it in this city and default or what what's going on what's going on be the bitch how you doing you definitely got me setting some better financial goals definitely boost also sometimes raise your debt to income ratio perhaps if you're trying to get a, a house they're gonna probably say you don't do the boost. Um, because like even like when they do your house, it's like they're gonna look at only your primaries, the, your primaries, not your authorized users. They're not gonna look at any of them. They're just gonna look at your primaries. That's it. Nothing else. They're not gonna look at the score is to help like the mortgage people, but or, or to like for FHA or something, but they are gonna look at your report. They're not gonna care about what the score is. I you could find somebody with an eight hundred credit score. But if it's just 800 with like all authorized users, they're not really doing nothing, they're not gonna get approved for the house. But you can find somebody with six something like mine who have a lot of primaries, um, they'll get approved faster than that. So the score is not always important. It's like now they're starting to look at, especially car uh, people, some credit cards, business credit cards and stuff like that. So when you get into those aspects of uh, leveraging your credit for your business and stuff like that, they're not gonna look at. They're gonna look at the report. The score won't even matter to them. Business credit is a whole lot easier to build, and they will give you a lot more money. Hmm. Okay. Uh. Uh. Okay. That don't mean you ignore your personal credit either. I don't want because that's. I, I think that's what you're saying. Like fuck. Yeah. So business credit is a whole lot easier to build. <sighs> Not necessarily. Um, and so I would love to know your experiences with business credit. Taste the contact the person you owe. They may work with my hand if we don't move pay. That's what I just did the same. Okay, if you have anything on your credit report like old bills, just send just a letter. What's going on, Rico? Your score matters in the DMV. What you mean in the DMV? The Department of Motor Vehicles or in California? So I said, I'm not doing it, like Maryland, District of Cumberland. You know what you mean? Your score matters? Let me tell you something. For a home, your score matters to get you in the door, but they're going to look at your report. If your profile is thin, you're not going to get it. You're not going to get it. I don't care what you say. If you had a reposition, would you pay it off? Not too credit savvy. Um, if you had a reposition, would you pay it off? It depends. Um, if you pay it, if you if you're in a position to pay it off, and they will remove it for you paying it off, I just go pay it off. It's yeah, I will. But if you're not in a position to pay, pay it off, or they won't remove it, I'm not gonna pay it because the 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 effect on your credit is gonna be very minimal if they report it as paid, and then you lose a lot of your disputing rights. Meaning this, um, so like. So, like, say, for instance, you are in this process of disputing something, right? And you're looking at it like, okay, I didn't pay this because this ain't right. This wasn't right. This wasn't right. And I'm only paying, supposed to, I'm only supposed, by law, I'm only supposed to be paying debt that can be validated. Um, but in the sense of, in the sense of, like, a repossession that can be validated, uh, it might be beneficial to pay them off. But once you pay them off, Understand if they don't remove, so that's why you want to have the agreement in writing ahead of time. 
Once you build, have built your personal credit, if you have business that is profitable, you never have much touch your personal credit again because you can put everything in the business thing. You can still get a code or a repo, your credit report. You might not exactly what you want though. Okay. So Jamaica, why are we doing this credit stuff? There is never a situation where it's okay to have a negative on your credit report. Okay? So even if you still could get a car with a repo, we're going to act like you can't. And we're going to attack that repo completely. So never put in your mind, oh, you can still do this with bad credit. Bad credit is unacceptable in all formats. We're going to, simplest, this is, don't, listen. This is what I need y'all to do. Jamaica, you might could get a car with a repo. But guess what? The mindset is what it can. You, I want y'all to feel like you're locked up with this on your credit. And so I don't want you to get complacent of saying, okay, well, it's just like, I have literally one thing. There's probably most of the things I could get approved for. I got a house. I mean, I probably get the, the I probably could get this car situation mitigated as well. But don't ever get in the mindset of saying, okay, it's okay on my credit because I could do this. Never have that mindset. Then white folks will never have that mindset. If there was an, you have the right and responsibility to challenge items on your credit report because, um, number one, 60 some percent of credit reports have inaccuracies. What if you sent this to and get no response from the bureau? What do you do next? Send a sick, another round? You send a different letter. You send a letter saying, look, I sent you this and I hope you have your proof that you sent them. I sent you, I would, I would, the letter should be simple to this apartment right here. I sent you this on this date. Here's the proof. It has been 30 days, allowing an extra 15 days for COVID, yada, 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 whatever, whatever. According to the Fair Credit Reporting Act, you must delete because I have never received the response in regards to your investigation. The interest rate is going to be high if you have a repossession. You have to get that removed. You have to get that removed. Um, but like I was saying, if you, so if they're not going to, so this is the thing I was saying about collections. So a repo is on your account as a derogatory, as like a, um, like a charge off. And so it's on your credit report as that, meaning that it's charged off. If you pay it, they don't they don't have to take it off your credit report. All they have to do is mark that you paid it. And that's minimal. You still got the charge off. You got the account to the point where it had to be repossessed or charged off or whatever. And so that part of your history, 35% of that, your, part of your credit, the, it, the your credit report and your credit score, the number comes from payment history. For the most part, it's the biggest factor. And so that history is still there. So you want that history removed. Now listen, if it's showing it's paid or not paid, it's really minimal. The history is still there. The, it's, it's, the, now if you're doing something for debt to income ratio, yada, 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 that's also minimal. They want, when, when, when you're talking about installment loans, um, house mortgages, repo, like cars and stuff like that, debt to income does not play that major part. They look at revolving credit when it comes to that aspect of your credit score. So what that means is simply this. Off, say if you're in a position, call them up and say, look, I'm going to dispute this debt because I don't think it's bad. Um, I'm not refusing to pay you. However, what might be in the best interest of me and you is, don't call them, I'm sorry. I misspoke greatly. Write it down. And say, listen, I definitely think that I don't, I don't owe this debt to you. I'm not refusing to pay it. However, before I go through the process of trying to validate it, let me offer you this to settle this and remove it. And don't offer them the whole amount off the muscle. Offer them a fair amount. They're going to go under. Not something stupid that it doesn't seem realistic. But let's just say I'm going to put a number out of the sky. Let's say you owe, I don't know, $10,000. Um, I would say, listen, to settle this debt, I will pay you up a sum of $6,500 for this and the deletion of the account. And then if they say yes, they'll sign it. You send them a check that day, bop, you're over with, and it's going to be deleted within a certain time frame. Um, generally speaking, 30 days. Um, but if they say, nope, we're not going to delete nothing, we can't delete it, we won't delete it or something like that, there is no use of you paying it. Your best thing to do is just to start attacking it. Because at the same time, it's going to be so minimal. And once you pay something, you lose a lot of your rights to dispute the validity of it. Let me tell you why you do lose your life. Because if it wasn't valid, why did you pay it? If you didn't think it was valid, why would you pay? So when you send a dispute to the credit bureau and say, listen, this valid, this debt is invalid because, and it's marked as paid, they're going to send you a nasty old frivolous letter back saying, well, if you didn't think it was valid, why the hell did you pay? Why? If you thought it was invalid. So you definitely want to have that. You definitely don't want to just pay it without a written in writing, proof that they will delete it once you pay. If you don't have that, they don't have to take it out.
some take it off, but they don't have to. And if you don't, hey, baby. And if you don't, that's on your, that's, that's tough city says the kitty. You asked out. Ain't nothing me or no credit repair specialist could ever help you with at that point for real. I mean, we could dispute it and stuff, but it's just going to be like, mm, oops. Yeah, you shouldn't have paid that. You paid it. That's your agreeing that it's valid because you paid it. By you not paying it, you could say, I ain't paid it because I didn't think it was valid. Do you help with repairing credit? Not in a sense, but I will be um soon. You think you should pay care credit? Do you think I should pay that care credit off if they will delete it from your account? If they're deleted from your credit bureaus, yeah. If they're not, no. Don't pay it off. Start disputing them hoes. Start fucking with them. Start fucking with them today. You only really get one dispute per month. I just paid off two counts at a settlement amount. That was that a mistake? Did you which for, so did the settle amount amount include deletion? If it included deletion, it's not a mistake. It's perfect. You know, you didn't have to fight. You just had to pay them. Like even see, understand this. Even if you get it removed from your credit report, don't think you don't owe them people. Then people are not going to open an account for you. And then people can come back and try to sue you for the amount that they think that you owe. Even though they're no longer reporting from your credit bureau. That just means that they, lo they lost the right to report it. That doesn't mean they lost the right to collect. How do you get student off of like school, like like them schools like Remington? Dispute them the same way. Anything on a credit report can be disputed. It's not a dispute or collection. I just don't want it anymore. Oh, okay. Yeah, it's better to keep accounts on your profile if they're open and in good standing. If they're open and in good standing, they don't, a closed account don't have the same boom as an open account. So, um, is it a reason you want it? I mean, is it just, I mean, I wouldn't just keep it open. You might not can't not using it, but just keep it open. It's good to have open accounts. The more the better. The perfect credit score has 20 plus open accounts. The 850 has 20 plus open accounts in good standing. They closed the accounts, but still going, going into my major. Well, they closed them. Did they delete them? That's the question. If they didn't delete them, dispute them. If you got a judgment, it's going to be even harder, though. If you got a judgment, you were supposed to respond to the judgment. You can respond to the judgment. I just don't want the bill. But then pay it down to the... Look, listen, listen. I'm about to tell you the trick, Tasty. If you don't want the bill, but you can pay it off, this is what you do. Go put that money in a separate account, enough for that bill, and have it automatic draft so you're not even knowing you're paying the bill. The reason being, you want them monthly payments to show in your credit report. Don't ever just say, oh, I don't want the bill. Well, if you don't want the bill and you want to pay it off, black people don't want to just pay it off and think you're doing something good for your credit because zero utilization is horrible on a credit report. The best thing for you to do is this. I ain't going to say nothing wrong. If you can pay them off, go, open, go see your bank, credit union, whatever you have, open a separate account, and, say, and just put the money in there and have them paid every month. Do not dispute online at all. I pay all credit cards off of 2016. I have a mortgage. That's good. Okay. You don't just close the account just because you don't want to have a bill. If you don't want to have a bill, go open up an account. It's going to take you. It's going to take you. Whatever bank you have a relationship with, it's going to take you all the 20 minutes. Can I get a wink? I'm very serious. I have been watching. You Looks like you know what you're doing. Oh, well, thank you. <laughs> don't you want to know can she scam it off shake it? She not trying to pay it. No, you can't scam it off. That's not true. Over 10% utilization does not hurt your score. Under 10% utilization hurts your score. T your typical utilization you want to get is between 10 and 20, but nothing over 30. Under 10% utilization hurts your score. That's a myth. I don't have many accounts over 800. And two of us that drop off. Should I open another? Yep. You want account. 10% is like optimal. There's no, there is no major difference between somebody who's using 10 or 15% utilization. There's no major difference. And it's very minimal from 10 to 20. Very minimal. But you do see drops off under 10 because it shows you're not using your card. You don't want to, the perfect credit score shows um, that, that you know how to use credit responsibly. If you don't use credit, how can you display that you know how to use it responsibly? So 0% utilization is not good for credit report. Who told you that is wrong? It's not good for optimal credit on a trade line. That's very incorrect. The whole goal is you want to look like the white people on, on, on paper. You want to look like you know how to use it responsibly. And so they'll give you more. They'll give you uh, better rates. They'll give you because you know how to use it responsibly so the risk is low. So if you keep a very low balance like under 10%, you're not using credit. You got a $1,000 card and using $10. 
you're not using credit. They know they see that. They have things to see that. That's how your score model is done. But if you have a ten thousand dollar, if you have a thousand dollar card and you're using like a hundred dollars, you keep it like that. Mm, 100, 120, 110, whatever, whatever. Okay, cool. You make sure you make your monthly payments on time, um, and 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 you charge like that. Don't. Don't don't not have no utilization. That's not good at all. Have you want you want to have some usage on it? I might put it to YouTube. <laughs> so don't ever think somebody whoever told you ten percent under ten percent is this day wrong. They'll, I can show you general when I when I was doing this full time, um, general drop offs when people just pay off everything for zero percent of credit. I just paid off all my bills. How much credit score went down? Because you're not using your credit. You want they want to see usage. They want to see I use one for gas and cell phone bill. Perfect. You get that reported, you pay the bill, you keep it pushing. So you're getting a positive payment and you're getting um a good credit utilization. I use pay off every month, but this month I pay minimum payment. It depends. Don't go over thirty percent ever. Don't ever go over thirty percent ever. There's really a very minimal impact from ten to twenty for real. Thirty percent is good. Thirty percent is okay, but never go over that. Minus two percent and one percent. Yep, go charge something, sweetie. There's a lot of good, great videos you can watch on YouTube for free that will teach you about credit. Yep, just don't get it from here. Thank you, Cash. Go ahead, and send them everywhere else. <laughs> just go ahead, and send them somewhere else. Do you free form the dispute letter? Um, sometimes. Uh, I have some that I use. I don't form. I don't like form letters because they could tell it. Um, so do I free form? Yeah and no. I might have a general template that I go by and I like look at it and see what's going on and it's a situation, but I'm I'm more I do detailed disputes. Which is why I like I don't like doing credit repair for other people because I don't know how to not do it my way. And my way is very detailed. Like I'm literally looking, you know me, bitch, I'm looking for the receipts. Bitch, this ain't spelled right. That ain't spelled right. You spelled the street wrong. You put drive and it's supposed to be lane. That's not 100% accuracy. Stuff like that. And I'm really sending them a detailed dispute about that. And, you know, I don't do, I, I quote laws sparingly. I don't do all that. Making it legal. They know the rules. They have lawyers. They know the rules better than us. But what I will do is I will send them a letter. I will cite some some case law, but not much, especially on dispute letters because it don't really don't matter. But I will highlight inaccuracies. You can use the entire card, but pay it off at least three days before it's set to report. Don't pay it off, pay it down. <laughs> yeah, I just I, I do very detailed disputes. And so in a sense it's freestyle, but I will sometimes have like a template. And sometimes I look at a dispute letter and be like, damn, I whooped this bitch. How can I get my score to court into the 800? I have 765 for score, but I want my actual score over 800. If you're in the 765s and you don't have any negatives, add some trade lines. If you have a lot of primaries, if you had, so you generally want, like, like generally it's okay to add an authorized user, AU trade line, if you generally have three primaries to a trade line. Um, generally speaking, it's okay. It's not going to help you get a house, but it could help you with, like they talk about debt to income ratio, it could help you with, uh, average age of accounts. It could have you just having a number of accounts. It could help you because it does count as another account. Um, it could help you with um, just some payment history stuff too. So an uh, AU, but an uh, AU by itself ain't gonna do nothing for you unless you have at least three primaries to an uh, AU. If you have six primaries, get two AUs and you'll see it. A primary is an account that you are primarily responsible, an account that you have opened yourself. Like, um, a card that has your name on it that you applied for and got approved for. I'm not going to ever give y'all nothing but facts. I know this for real. I really do this for real. I used to steal people's credit. So I know what I know what per perfect credit scores look like. I know what's on per perfect credit reports. I know what they look like. I know what they're supposed to, what they, what they see and what they look for. I know. What credit cards do you suggest to help build your credit score quickly? There's nothing. So, okay, the word quick and credit don't go together. If you're looking for something quick in credit, it's going to be illegal. Um, if you get a credit card, no matter what it is, the first month you report is going to take is going to dip your credit score just a little bit because it's a new account. There's no such thing as quick in credit. It don't go together. Anything that's quick in credit is illegal. There is no quick credit card. Any credit card that you get, they can only report once a month. They can only report once a month. Shiggy, you should record short videos and put them on YouTube and monetize those. At least you can make some money off them, for real. I'm going to do some YouTube stuff. So there's no such thing as quick and credit. 
If you're looking for quick credit, it's something illegal, it's a scam or something like that. If somebody can tell you you can do something quick, I am, listen, listen to me. If you Google my name, they're going to tell you Shaky had 90 different IDs. He could be a doctor today and a, and a senator tomorrow. Um, so trust what I'm telling you when, from, from a legal standpoint. And if I'm telling you that I could do this and I'm done this and on my own credit report, I have been working on it since December of 2019. What does that tell you? There is no quick. If there was quick, sister, I would have did it. So your accounts ain't going. So no matter what card you get, the first month is just going to be the first month it reported. The second month is just going to be the second month it reported. And the third month going to be the third month. It'll level off after about three months. Make three monthly payments and you'll see your credit score just kind of magically just jump a few more points that, that you may have lost by opening a new account. Why do the credit reporting agency report your score as a number, but when you go to apply for something, it's totally different? Because they might be using, they were probably reporting your Vantage score and the lenders using your FICO score. But you have different FICO scores. You have the FICO 8, the FICO 9, the FICO 7, FICO 43. You have different FICO. Uh, I'm, I'm lying. There's the FICO 10. Uh, 8 was commonly used. I don't know what the hell happened to the FICO 9. You got the FICO Auto 2, the FICO Home 3. FICO has different score models for different things. Please post it on your YouTube account so we can get back. For this good, it's self good. I like self. I have self, uh, actually. Um, so I would. I, I got self last year when I was in the. So while I repair, I build too. So by the time I knew it was gonna take between six to twelve months to repair my credit footing, so I had time. So I, uh, what I did was started getting stuff so I could have positive trade lines. Like right now, I have like sixteen trade lines on my credit report, which is pretty good. So do you? So. Do that. Gain interest the longer I take the pay off. Um, it should gain interest per se. What cat credit is not? Is it revolving? Is it a revolving account? You can pay it back. Yeah. If you if it's a if it's a revolving cat credit, pay it down good, to like ten percent. Huh? Good morning, uh, Shaky. Um, and Sip Nation. Good morning, Sip Nation as well. Um, quick question. Uh, I just went and looked at my um, my uh, through Credit Karma. I went and looked at all of my um, closed accounts, uh, you know, and I have four closed accounts. But this is the thing. I never closed the accounts. The credit cards that were for the particular um, stores, they went over to a different company, be it if, it's, if Barclays went to Citibank or Citibank went to wherever. So those accounts that I have that are closed, those cards were not being used. I paid them off, not used them. So instead of showing zero, they're showing closed. What should I do about those four? Are they ne so? Are, are there any any, any negligence in it? Any late payments? Anything like that? In them no, all? no. It was is because there, is, I I used the card and then the next month I paid it off. So I right, have so, four cards like that. All right, it's fine. That's not going to negatively impact you. It's not necessarily helping you, but it's not negatively impacting you either. Um, okay. so it's not something that you should try to dispute or anything as long if they had negative information with it as far as like uh late payments or any type of anything like that or defer anything like that then you'll want to get it off but if it's showing a perfect payment history even though it's closed it's not negatively impacting you in fact it is probably boosting you a couple points here and there so it's not like they're doing bad things yeah um, because i said when i opened time. it up um they either have a green check or, or or x red x and everything is green on all four of them Oh, green okay. checks. All right, so you good. It's not going to make it for you. It's not. The, it's not nothing to worry about. Okay, it thank you. It does not. No, no, no. Somebody said it doesn't really score down. That's not true. If you have closed accounts, if you just close them, your score goes down because they just closed. It's no longer open account. But how she's saying it's been sitting there for a while. So the so the, the part of closing the accounts, of all she's already felt that it is leveled off for her. They're not actually hurting her at this point because they've already been closed. How long have these accounts been closed? They have been, did they close yesterday? Um, no, these accounts have been closed since um, uh, two of them was closed at the beginning of 2019 and two of them were closed at yes. mid-2019 as well. Right. Okay. So it's not, as long as it's not showing any negative payment history, you're good. It's not negatively impacted. There's nothing to disprove that anyway. Because um, the, the, the creditor also has a right to... Um, as a creditor, you have, they, have, they, have, they have rights too. Don't think you just don't want rights. But they have rights to you know, terminate relationships as well. It's not going to hurt you as this account is closed unless it just happened. And from what she's saying, it didn't. 
Um, so that's not what's that's not the case. When you when it no, they've been they've with, been closed, and um, yeah, it's like, and said. I've always you know I've always was uh you know taught, and uh, it's my parents were very very good when it came to credit. They will always tell you tell us credit is better than cash money in your pocket. So right. definitely, um, whenever I charge something, the next month I would pay it off, and I charge something again, and and you know and then. That, those were the four cards that I particularly, I was like, nah, I'm going to just pay it off and just let it sit there. Well, I paid them yeah. off, and now they're showing zero with green checks, and it's just saying close, and it's four of them. Right. It's not, that's not a negative event, baby. That's okay. not negative. That's not, that's not negative. Right? Okay. Thank you so much for your time. No problem, baby. <laughs> so, okay, I saw some, a brother else in the comments say it won't affect your school, but if you go back to them, they're going to give you a lower credit amount. Why? No, that's not true. Either. Okay, most lenders, they look at, they don't look at the history that they don't, they look at the history that you have with them in retrospect, but not as far as if they're showing closed and it wasn't closed by high, basically the banks got bought out by somebody or whatever the case may be, uh, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. So stop dealing, like say for instance, I know when one of them like, okay, this bank used to issue the Victoria's Secret Club, but Victoria started working with this bank, and so they had to close all them accounts or switch them over. And if you had the option and all this other stuff like that, that was going on. A lot of it ha happens all the time. So sometimes accounts get a close that's not even of your own doing. They just get terminated by the, by the credit grant. Now, when you first, so you're, so you're getting benefits of having an open account on your credit report. So when it's first closed, it's a closed account. So it's going to be a, 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 you're not going to get the benefit of having an open account. So it's going to, it's going to take a dip. However, that's going to level off after a couple months. And so it's just on there showing that it's, a, it's not negatively impacting her credit score, I assure you. That's never a situation for that. So I don't know what they even, I don't even know where they even come from that. Oh, girls, no, it's not. It's not messing up her interest rate. It's not doing anything. It's not harming her at all. It's probably actually helping her. Them, them, them four accounts probably a, a little extra 20 points. I bet you this, if she disputes them and gets them off, she's going to take a dip. Because that's four, even though they're closed, that's four less payment histories that they have. So that's less, the payment history is the most. But, she, you know, certainly, I certainly will. Do you know about trade lines? Yes, I know about trade lines. Which one about trade lines? What's up, sis? Hey, Shaky. Hey. Um, I had said that because I was told that, um, so I had paid off an account with um, Bob's Furniture, right? Okay. And um, it was a large credit line, but I paid it all off. And um, she said, you know, so are you going to be purchasing, you know, with us again? And I said, no. I said, so I probably should, should just close it. And she said, well, I would... Um, I would do that right away because it could affect your credit score. And I said, hmm, how could it affect my credit score if it's a zero balance? I don't understand. And she said, well, it has to do with the amount of credit that you already have open um, ratio to the amount of credit that you owe. Okay. So that if you close this account, it's going to increase the amount of credit you owe. Um, and not show a larger credit line. Do you, do you get what I'm saying? So that's why gotcha. I said that she was saying that it's going to affect so it, it can drop my score because now I right. owe more credit versus the amount of credit that I have open. Gotcha. All right. So check this out. That was during the time. Well, so let me say, first off, she's trying to sell you furniture or try to get mm -hmm. you to finance furniture or whatever. So she don't want you to close the account because guess what? She wants you to get some more furniture. She wants That's her job. She wants you to get more furniture, get more in debt. That's what she wants. So right. the information coming from her is going to be skewed that way. Now, the second part, this woman, these accounts was already closed. It's not like she had the option to close them. It was oh, another okay. situation. These were closed already on her report. And so these were closed by the credit grantor for different reasons, more than likely because the banks were stopped doing business. There were store cards for the most part, from what I understand. And so the banks that were actually issuing the credit uh, stopped doing business with the store. Thus, for the store, had different stores and stuff, stuff like that. So these were closed already, um, and they were terminated by the, by the credit grant. She had no right. control over that. So you, the question was, should she dispute them and get them off? No, it's perfect payment history. Why would I dispute something with perfect payment history when payment history is 35% right. of your credit? Now, in the case of you, that's a whole different situation. And like I said, there's no cookie cutter stuff. So just yeah. like you're saying, you were told, What's was right for her credit is may not be right for yours. In right. the case of but in the case of yours, check this out. Installment loans. So the credit that she was talking about is it revolving or was it installment? It was revolving. Okay. So all right. So listen. Generally speaking, you don't want to close revolving accounts. 
if you have the option. Um, generally speaking, for revolving accounts, you want to use them and uh, utilize them and use them responsibly. That's generally speaking okay. what you want for your revolving accounts. Um, so in the case of the Bob's Furniture or whatever you got, and you got this revolving account, um, she wanted to sell you furniture, so she don't want you to close the account, but also you don't want necessarily to have a closed account to your, that you option on your credit report. Like okay. if I have an option not to have a, if I have the option to have it closed or not, I would have it open. But to have it on there or not, I would still have it on there even if it's closed. You understand what I'm saying? Mm, so, so, in the, so in the case of you, I wouldn't probably close the account either. But in the case of this woman who had the account closed, I wouldn't dispute them off. So yeah. that's not, so I mean, and if you close the account, it will take some type of dip because it's one less open account. Um, right. so, so it's just what's going to happen. Um, it will level off at some point, but I mean, it will, it will just, it will happen. Your payment history is your payment history. But if you have a, a, a if you have an open revolving account, you try not to close them. You want to get as many of them as, as possible because that's considered a primary. And so with your primaries, I mean, they look at this when it comes to getting your major purchases like house and car, and they are very, very foundational to what your credit needs is. So just like, I know you're saying, oh, I was told, the, I was told don't close it. But guess what? You was also told if it's closed, don't get it taken off. So your situation yeah. is versus two different situations. Two you different things. Okay. Everybody's situation, every single person, is. there's no right for everybody. A, okay. a, a, a robbing account is one that's considered one that you you have a certain limit and, and you, you can, can use it. it. And if you pay it, you get some more of the limit. And some yeah. of the accounts is once you pay, it's like really it's, it's gone, right? So and those affect you differently. But if you had a revolving account, you try not to close them. If you have it, if an option, and some of the accounts they don't work like that, so you can you can close them and and just pay them off. But in in, in a revolving account, you want to keep it as open as possible. So, so just have, go buy a little pillow, or a little a little. <laughs> try to keep the account open. Yeah, go get a lamp or something, girl. Go get a little a little throw. <laughs> yeah, a little throw rug or something, and and just. Pay, you know, just something simple that you could just pay on like ten, fifteen dollars, have it automatic draft, and don't worry about it. Okay, okay, all right. Thanks, Shaky. No I was still paying my car back early. I save money and pay up early. Is that true? Generally speaking, if you pay up early, you pay less interest on installment loans. Generally speaking, that's where I went wrong. I just student loans that were paid off in a capital and compromise, but the school the school dropped ninety five percent. Yeah, if it's if it's closed and it's good. Leave it alone. What a name drop in a few seconds to play. What are you talking about? What's considered a revolving account? Anything that's that a credit card or any account that you could charge on, and if you pay, they give you some more to charge with. So that's what a revolving account is. Installment loan, like savings, installment loan is like your car, your house, um, your, your set amount loans. Those are installment loans. After you pay them, like, okay, um, you got a mortgage loan for X or Y, you got a mortgage loan for 100000 um, and when you pay 50000 you don't have another 50000 to play with. No, you have equity in, 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 in whatever it is that you purchase. I need info on trade lines, please. What you want to know? Ask the question. If you, while we talk about it, I'm about to get up because I'm about to go. You wouldn't do bi weekly with the car. I wouldn't do bi weekly. Hello? Oui. Hello, hello. What's up? Um, I, uh, I, Iran. What? Iran, Iran. I'm going to go to the car. Why is it China? <laughs> Why is it China? Why is it China? I can't exit. I hate it. X, X off. Goodbye. Bye bye. Press the X button. <laughs> Press, X. Press X button. <laughs> Press X button. <laughs> <laughs> press, press X. X. Bye bye. How are you? Bye. Bye. Where are you? Where goodbye. are you from? I mean, goodbye. Where goodbye. are you goodbye. from? Goodbye. 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 Press X. Goodbye. Bye. Bye. <laughs> I can't X them off. Damn. I hate when somebody do that. <laughs> Get off. Bye, sir. Sir. Goodbye. Master Iran. Bye bye, bye bye, bye bye. Bye bye. Bye bye. Bye bye. Father Gala. Bye bye. Why? Mosam Ahad is so can you get a rest of your booster, Dini? Kidagos, the check your buddy. 
Велика. Или си ради? Гуши ходи? No, I I want to keep it because I'm gonna put it all on YouTube. I don't want to do all that. I want to get them because like that's blowing me, son. Oh, I ain't gonna add nobody else, son. You just got to ask your question. Hey, nobody. Could you press the extra? Could you press the X, please? Could you just get what out? What is your mobile? Sir, oh. press X. X button. X. Click X. Fan. Ava Vasi o pus kasakani. Hi. Hi. So you just go sit there. Sajo, Sajo, bio. Bio, bio, karadri. I, if I leave, I'm not coming back. I'm gonna let y'all know now. Could you press the X down? Pus, pus. Sit in si o pus. Loi vino mi atane loi van. Sure. Bye. Bye. <laughs> Sek bade gina qala. Ay jan na shuni wey mani ka kafe ka gina qala amin odena. Ha? I might get a request from people. Khoy. Dadi si opusta qasa gani? A telefoni qasa gani. Alo. Hey, you don't follow. Live now, it's your pussy at a new. I live new image, you know, it's a hot sit down, all I'm on a good point. It's not so now, so now the party. Oh, get on a heavy enough. Oh, now I'm going to be separated. Oh, God, never him. God, was he? As I said, I don't know. ساشتاد یکی مشکل فرات شورتی قصه ویا گنی دید خدا تصویر کات بیا اما هاد هاد هاید افتاد لایو که سر نه سر نه آن خورده سری دراز کو سری دراز با تصویر خوی نیای Si on pousse, c'est quand il y a des chiens, 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 You're lucky. Who's President Bush? Y'all know he gets our fucking minds right, bitch. Just stay the fuck up. Stay the fuck up. You know that bitch? Fuck up. 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 Y'all look at this bitch we got now, just worry about Mexican. But bitch, I ain't lying. For what I ain't like Bush, but one thing I ain't like, he ain't like you funky bitches. He ain't like you funky motherfucking sand dune, motherfucking camel riding ass bitches with y'all must ass and y'all liberty dicks. Yeah, I saw the porn with y'all on. Y'all some liberty dicks and y'all don't be circumcised. Nay, nay. Bitch, yeah, fuck you. Bush, bitch, Bush. I'll go get that bitch. I'll go get that bitch right now, bitch. I'll go get that bitch. Okay. Here comes drop bombs on y'all dumb fuck asses, girl. With them fucking cameras. Where your camera at? Where your camera at? Where your camera at? Bitch. Must be funky ass. Y'all think that shit cute. 
Y'all think that shit funny. We giving these people good information. Bitch, you sitting up here with all this bullshit, bitch. I get pushed for your funk ass. Ugly ass. Stupid ass. Motherfucker. Yeah, George Bush. George Bush, bitch. George Bush. George Bush. You know, you know, you know George Bush? You know George Bush? He said bomb. George Bush make a rat go boom. George Bush make a rat go boom. George Bush make a rat go boom. Boom. You understand? George Bush. Bomb over Baghdad. George Bush. George Bush make Afghanistan go boom. George Bush gonna make Iran go boom. You understand? Iran, Iran, Iran. Come Iran, first, Iran. Iran. George Come Bush. Iran. George Bush make Iran. Iran, Iran. Boom. Assalamu alaikum. Come. Come from Iran. You want some pig foot? Come from Iran. Come from Iran. Pig feet. Pig feet. Pig feet. Pig feet. Pork chop. What's the dog? Pork chop. You want one? Pork chop. Chashi. No, no pork chop. Wink, wink. Piggly wiggly. Ham. Ham hot. Honey ham. George Bush. George Bush, I need you. George Bush, make a run. George Bush, make a run. Okay. Okay. Bye y'all. I'm gonna talk to y'all later, girl. Fuck these uh fuck these sand dunes. These sand dunes buying bitches.